the two weeks of September. Okay, it's July the 6th, 2021. I'll call this regular council meeting to order. Result of the agenda for July 6th, regular meeting of council meeting and, uh, adopted. Moved by Councilor White and seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? Carried. <clears throat> Number three, result of the minutes of the June 15th regular council meeting be approved by Councillor Gloria, seconded by Councillor Deputy Marilyn Tony. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Moving right down to six, <clears throat> communication 6.1. Resolved that the multi material stewardship Manitoba 2020 annual report be received. Moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor White. Discussion? Mr. Poole, is there anything in there? Like, uh, I don't think so. It's just goes over what they do and recycling like that. So we have uh, they're going to be doing an audit. Later this fall. All in favor? It's carried. 6.2. Resolve the letter from the Association of Manitoba Municipalities dated June 18, 2021, be received. <coughs> Moved by <coughs> Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. 6.3. Resolve, resolve that building permits 39, 21 through 43, 21 with a total estimated value of $265,000 be received. Moved by. <coughs> Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Wintoni, or Deputy Mayor Wintoni. I would wish to abstain from this one uh, as one of the applications is my own. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.4. <clears throat> no resolution there? It's just the uh, communication. Oh, okay, so council sees the uh, the letter of support for the renewal of forest management uh, plan for Louisiana Pacific Canada, and that's something that is asked by Louisiana Pacific uh, to uh, give that letter of support for, I guess, renewing their licensing and continuing operations within the province. Councilor White. I just want to compliment uh, Mr. Poole for drafting that letter and, and council for supporting that letter because from an environmental perspective uh, as a biology person i see nothing but good absolutely i'm thinking the fires have been raging around us for the last month or two and if this mountain south of us or north of us had in fact been an over mature old forest everything was old those things burn up is not when they're going to if they're going to burn it's when they're going to burn so having a young old multi-age class forest the LP has probably helped us significantly from not losing our forest. So simply from an environmental perspective, the economics are self-explanatory. Uh, it's been a fantastic uh, thing for our community. So thanks to council for supporting that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Seven, 7.1, resolved that the Director of Public Works report be received, ruled by Marilyn Tony, second by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Delorier. I see um, <clears throat> we removed the the uh, old curb and gutter on Main Street South there. Um, when When is it slated to get, are we bringing in that machine that does it? Yeah, it's supposed to be here on Monday. Okay. Tomorrow morning and just confirm that. Okay. Because, uh, they were working on it uh, this week. Excellent. It's good to know. Anything further? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 
721. Resolve the May 2020 Swan River County Transit Bad Report be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Council and CAO's report. I'll start with tonight, Council Morio from the Great North. Hey, um, not too much. Uh, last week, um, on the 29th, Tuesday, we had a regular uh, committee of the whole meeting where we, uh, um, from the environmental uh, portfolio, we reviewed the snow removal policy, which uh, will be up for review um, and approval later on in the agenda. Um, I also would like to uh, congratulate uh, the Governor General designate uh, Mary Simone, uh, the first Indigenous uh, person in Canada to be uh, named um, the Governor General. Um, also, congratulations to the uh, Manitoba Métis Federation um, in signing today the, the Manitoba Métis Self-Government uh, Recognition and Implementation agreement today with the government of Canada, which recognizes the Manitoba Métis Federation as a self-government um, for their affairs. And uh, just a reminder out there that uh, for at the rec center for the swimming pool and that, that for the month of July, uh, Wednesday the free swim is sponsored by Doak Fuel, uh, Fuels. And so we enjoy that swim and Myself, I sponsored uh, Saturdays from 1 to 3 um, in showing my appreciation for people's patience as we did uh, all the repairs and that and the closures for the year. So hopefully people can get out to the uh, wellness center there and enjoy the free swims that were sponsored uh, for Wednesday and Saturday of this month. And that's all I got. I think I've seen that um, a lot of those swims were booked up, so... Uh, Thanks definitely to our sponsors and to yourself as well, Council Morio, for that uh, generous uh, support for uh, people to uh, freely go use the Wallace Center for the first time in, in a long, long time. Okay, no problem. <laughs> uh, Deputy Mayor Lincoln. Cool. That's a far circle you made. Um, <laughs> So a couple items, uh, the fireworks display, kudos to the Town of Swan River Administration, uh, the fire team and everyone else involved in the fireworks display was um, wonderfully done and kudos to everyone involved in that and that was you as well, Councillor Friesen, so thank you for, for, for all of that. Um, and as Councillor Morio and Mayor Jacobson um, Discuss the pool is open. There are the free swims coming up. Um, I know that a few of them are already booked, and my family has taken advantage of those too. So I encourage all the families uh, within our valley to use the facilities that we have. Check out the long-awaited uh, opening of the pool, and of course, the hot tub is open. So there we go. Um, last point that I think I should mention a little bit. I haven't been quite sometime is the COP program um, for the community. I co-chair the, uh, or I chair the task force committee that looked after the, the uh, COPP program and that program is underway. We have boots on the ground. Uh, we are patrolling throughout the valley or throughout Swan River, sorry. Uh, we are known as the Swan Valley COP with the idea that it will branch out to other communities as we get it more established. Um, we do have, like I said, boots on the ground. We are, the COP program is meant for eyes and ears for the RCMP. It's not to um, take care of crime or um, make crime disappear. That's not what the COP program is about. It's about providing that information and just another set of eyes at different hours of the day. Um, our members are, are fully trained um, and uh, where they're not in a position to get themselves into harm's way. So you will see vehicles around town with the COPP stickers, logos on their vehicle um, and patrolling around. So kudos to, to uh, 
everyone involved. There are 17 members currently, and we have a waiting list for more to be trained at this time. And we're always looking for, and as looking for donations for this group, uh, it's a completely um, volunteer base, so anything is is great. The Swan Valley Co-op did donate uh, gift cards to every single member um, to help with offset the cost of fuel for driving around. So, other than that, uh, that's all that I had. I had no other meetings that I can recall or see see in my calendar at this point. But um, that's all I have to share. And on that note, you know, COPP, we're glad to hear that that is underway, and thanks to all the volunteers that have involved that, right from the organization that got together to uh, an individuals that were involved in that from the past to uh, where it is today, and hopefully we can continue to grow that membership and, and get out there and, and do what we can to uh, you know, protect and, and serve, so to speak, the areas of, of the town. <clears throat> And so I guess on that also, uh, Dr. Merrill and Tony, um, if somebody does or watching this today and, and want to volunteer for that, who do they contact? Uh, they can call, reach out to myself or Derek Armstrong. The two of us are coordinating uh, the COP program specifically. So reach out to us. We'll put you on a list. Um, you don't immediately go into a vehicle and start patrolling. There are background checks. There are uh, training and there is training involved. Um, but as soon as we get a handful of members, we will conduct another training session. Thank you. Councillor Friesen. Um, I just echo the fireworks. They were great, I thought, and I think it's still bad enough. And I Thanks to the guys for hauling the barricades over so we could get them put up in big time. Um, thank you for putting the flags up on 83 by the big flower day. They look great. And David, thanks for sponsoring a free swim. And kudos to the COP program. I love it. That's it. Cross the way. Just a, a few things. Uh, for those who don't know, the Prairie Mountain Health has a new uh, CAO, Brian Schoenbart by name. Very pleasant man, willing to meet and talk, and replies to his emails very quickly. So I'm excited about working with, with his leadership. Uh, talking about PMH, uh, just to bring you up to date right now, uh, Councilor Morio and myself and others are working embryonically, to say the least, about causing the LPM program in Swan River. I think there are 20 participants at the moment hopefully being able to allow them to bridge with Red River Community College and take their BM. So as a consequence of making that happen, we have to deal with PMH, obviously, because hopefully they would ask for it. So Mr. Schoenbart and I are in communication there. Uh, Doug Lovstad, the president of UCN, is very much in favor of the concept. Doug and I have been talking. And uh, the president of uh, Red River Community College is Fred Meyer. I've sent, left a few messages for him. I'm not Mr. Q2, or should get back. And I'm assuming the town would be excited about having 20 more bachelor of nurses graduates. So uh, I'll involve myself as a PMH person, as a town person. And as it evolves and looks like it's going to happen, I'll stay positive. I'll communicate the happenings with, with our team here. So uh, I'm excited about making that. Uh, relative to PMH, uh, we're doing really well with COVID. Uh, but there's a real danger when we become lackadaisical if we uh, lose our look, if we don't keep our six feet, if we don't wear our masks. Uh, I'm confident that hopefully we'll get through this quicker than we expected. We're way ahead of uh, who we want it to be. I'm thinking of it. The cow meeting that we attended also. I want to thank uh, Councillor Morio too and Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Johnny and Tony for the COP. I think that's a huge step for our community, having people out. And have you guys considered the foundation, the community foundation, as a possible source of funding to help you with gas, for example? We can definitely reach out. We have not yeah. reached out to anyone at this time, but uh, that's a great idea. I will add that to my list. Yeah, I think uh, they're pretty pretty good. And I also have talked uh, indirectly with our new, I, we weren't on media when you announced that there's a new uh, staff sergeant in the community. and. Uh, 
the mayor and uh, Derek have been to meet with him. And his name is written down here somewhere, but it's Joe. Staff Sergeant Duncan. Staff Sergeant Joseph Duncan. And uh, Gilbert Plains, a community person originally, so he's got roots in the area. So I'm hoping to meet with him tomorrow to bring, uh, you know, welcome and to also encourage him to contact us. And I want to thank you two gentlemen for uh, doing the initial contact. So lots of phone calls, lots of meetings, little mini meetings. So that's it for me. Thank you. Nothing that already hasn't been said. The fireworks, the cop, Councilor Morris' contributions, and proof. Okay. I uh, echo all of that, but nothing else to add. Okay. Um, I guess a really ongoing still is the shared services uh, that are keep ongoing, and we're not quite completed on that. Uh, on Staff Sergeant Duncan, definitely had a good meeting with him. Uh, just uh, kind of break the ice, so to speak, and, and welcome to the community. Uh, see how the pool joined me with that. We talked a, a lot about the partnerships that can be worked with, not only with COPP, but other funding uh, models that are out there for uh, them to take advantage of for patrolling areas, um, working with conservation. Uh, we talked about foot patrols, again, bringing that back. It may not happen in 2000. 21, but definitely something that we want to look at in 2022 if we can. Um, there are obviously lots of challenges that came out of COVID with less members going into training and all that, but uh, the RCMP is fully aware of that and, and uh, continue to work with trying to recruit as many uh, young people to become police officers. So it's going to be a challenge, but uh, this man seems to uh, have it together and I have a lot of confidence in what we're going to have is a uh, good staff sergeant who wants to be part of this community and he wants to live here and do what he can so um, we definitely want to do what we can to work with him on an ongoing basis and keep that communication uh, between us and the community and COP or whoever and other partners there are with our staff sergeant because uh, we've got some serious things happening and we need to work together on them so other than that again what we said already no sense in repeating it uh, Mr. Poole, did you have anything? Uh, yeah, council should be aware that the tax notices did go out, so the <clears throat> administration is pretty busy dealing with the phone calls and along with the everyday operations. Uh, we are getting a lot of phone calls regarding the, the education tax, the rebate, uh, and the town taxes. Uh, awaiting uh, the audit report from our uh, accountants. The CFO is awaiting that, so those documents should be coming hopefully sooner than later. Uh, I held a CEO's meeting in Birch River. Uh, that'll be a part of a written report coming to council at the next meeting, but uh, main discussions for the EMO coordinator to, to see where we can gain some efficiencies there, and obviously the asset management. I haven't completed the RFP, but hopefully by our next meeting that will be done. Uh, our safety officer position, that RFP will go on the website tomorrow and in the paper next week. So we'll get some, uh, we'll get some proposals back on that, uh, next Friday. Distract resource plan, once I get all my information, I guess council already knows to expect that, that detail in, uh, likely late August. I held, uh, assistant CA interviews, so we can discuss that, uh, in Canada, it's a personal meeting. Uh, so we have a selection there. Uh, just working with, with Brendan on the pool opening and for council to expect uh, the commission to, the airport commission to have an RFP for the management out uh, right away. So that meeting will get called uh, sooner than later. And uh, yet to discuss the advertisement for the fact sheet for the rec playgrounds with the uh, rec director, but we expect that as well to have the paper. That's good. Um, just maybe an update on the uh, Main Street West. We're still in communications with uh, the, uh, the government or the MI. MI. Yeah, we're having a meeting uh, tomorrow with them. Uh, the curb cutter 
Uh, it's expected that it'll start next week. There's some session based with the contractor in the morning. Okay. Uh, Council White just we have said that there's a new share for Prairie Mountain Health. I think that it's important to maybe bring up that the, the that we've been lobbying for a CT scan for some time and that uh, individual might need to be brought up to date on exactly what's been happening and where the communications were and where it's kind of ended so far. Uh, we, that, can, we can talk about that too. Yeah. Uh, on, on that topic, uh, Your Worship, I was meeting with a young nurse graduate very soon out of UCN. They're paying the second and third year nurses at UCN in the pod. They're paying their tuition, paying bonuses, and they're staying. One of the reasons is they have a CT scan. One of the comments was, why would they come to Swan River? We don't have a CT scan. So it's that CT scan is impacting us in so many ways. Doctors, nurses, all the time. Our anesthetist is going to brand them to work right now on odd days, odd weeks, whatever the numbers are because he can work down there with doctors working with results from the CT scan. We don't have one. So I know our MLA have been really aggressive. We met with the Premier last week and that we hit three or four key topics and the CT scan was definitely one of them. Uh, he's aware of it, but what's happened? Show me the money. I, I'm getting testy over this one. Our community has gone to bat, raised the funds, all the community, the whole Valley community, and yet, I haven't seen anything specific saying, hey, you'll have it in a year, you'll have it in two years, nothing. So, perhaps a letter from your officer again saying, hey, what's going on here? We, we need to, we, we, our community wants to know. And I can write the letter, of course, but I, I think it'll have more important impact yeah, if you no, do it. I, I can do that again, and, and uh, we obviously know that the minister is on leave right now, but I've been reaching out to Lynette Saragusa, so that's yeah. kind of where I'll go, because that's where I was kind of directing to begin with. Okay, so that's it, then we'll move on. <clears throat> 8.1, resolve that the updated snow removal policy be approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. I see uh, for advertising, you know, the, the different zones and everything, we had, I got my water bill today, so it obviously won't be in this one, but our plan will be to going forward to make sure this is heavily advertised yeah. okay because I, I think that's going to be key to you know it's not going to be a bang overnight people are going to be used to this it's going to be a you know a few different levels of educating people where where they live in the system so i think that's going to be as important as anything so yeah. for the discussion all in favor let's carry it 8.2 result of the Swan Valley Planning District audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2020. Be received. Moved by Councilor Gloria, seconded by Mr. Mayor Tony. Discussion. Councilor Gloria. I, I guess I can I can answer any try to answer any questions that anybody might have. I sit on the planning district board, so. None. All in favor? Let's carry. Nine point one. Resolve the town of Swan River request technical and financial assistance from the Manitoba Water Service Board for the design and installation of a permanent generator and auto transfer switch to service the water treatment plant at Ross Street Lift Station. The town's portion of the funding will be paid transfer from the water and sewer reserve. The estimated project cost is $350,000. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Definitely is a good idea. And since what happened here a little while, a month or so ago, this is a step in the right direction. I've actually had a few uh, residents in town uh, lobby and say, this should be a really important thing, so I think we're in the right, we're moving in the right direction. Councilor, uh, uh, Mr. Harvey or Mr. Poole, I guess that estimated project cost, I'm assuming we've got grants 
for this as well. What is the estimated granting available, or what is how much are we looking for granting on this project? With the Water Services Board, they split the cost. They split it. Okay. okay. Any other further discussion? Just, just so council is aware, <coughs> this is an unbudgeted item, so we expect to uh, see if we're needed to bring in a process to, to take money out of our reserves. Discussion of any more? All in favor? It's carried. Sorry. Here's a just a comment. Okay, go ahead. Um, it's probably, I mean, we're already seven months through the year. This probably isn't going to happen in 2021, so it's going to be budgeted for in 2022. Probably will be, yeah. but uh, we will get that just in case. Yeah. Just in case. 10.1. Resolve that accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 27714 to number 27785, totaling $165,845.21 as listed on Schedule A. Checks number 27727, what a duty the correct amount. Payroll accounts checks number 4882 to number 4892, totally $21,855.94. And it's listed on Schedule B. Payroll accounts checks number 4893 to number 4900, totaling $76,232.04 as listed on Schedule C. Direct deposits totaling $600 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by. Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 10 10.2. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and Subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations made by Manitoba Assessment Services on January 25th, February 3rd, and 26th, March 22nd, and 30th, April 16th, 28th, and 30th, and May 17th and 25th, June 3rd, 2021, be made to the 2021 property and business tax rolls with the resulting increases totaling $14,041.08 and the resulting reductions totaling $13,603.51. Moved by Council Morio, seconded by Mr. Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11, 11.1, resolve that bylaw 9, 2021, being a bylaw regarding parking and traffic control be read at first time. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Go ahead. So council's aware this the change that's that's uh, highlighted is the, the reference to the bylaw enforcement bylaw. Uh, the unfinished business is the two item parking downtown. I know there's a few cal meetings where where we had a few options on the table regarding permitting or, or changing our two hour parking, but that is not included in, in this because we have to get these changes done as soon as possible. So uh, this is first reading. If we, you know, I, maybe I can send an info package to council and we refresh on that to our parking uh, issue and go from there for second reading. And that's a good point. This first reading, we can make some changes or whatever by the time we get the third. So, any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.2, resolve the bylaw 
10, 2021, in bylaw describing the Taliesin River Council procedure bylaw be read a first time. Moved by Mayor Lintoni, second by Councilor White. This is the change to our meetings in the summer going from uh, one, uh, going from two meetings in July and August to one the first uh, Tuesday in those months. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay. We do you have an item for personnel? We have one. Yeah. Okay. Resolve that pursuits to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Law Council of the Committee and close the meeting to the public. Moved by Councilor DeLaurier, second by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. It's very camera.